Hi, welcome. So how can you make sure that your EKS cluster is secure? So one way is to make sure that it follows the EKS security best practices that the AWS team has released. So in this video, I'm going to go over and show you how to do it with the help of the tree. Okay, so in order to actually make sure that we follow the security best practices, the lovely EKS team has created this great guide. It is called the AWS EKS Best Practices Guide for Security, and it is hosted on GitHub. I'll post the link below in the video. And here you can go very, very deep into every aspect of your Kubernetes cluster and understand the different recommendations that they provide. So you can go section by section and make sure that your cluster's configuration meets those best practices. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, Shimon, so I have my EKS cluster, I go to resources, I have a lot of different deployments and resources running on it. How am I supposed to know if I'm following the best practices? And in order to do that, I really believe in automation and automated scanners. So what we have here is we have an open source project called the tree It's very popular. And what this project offers is the ability to perform a very simple installation on top of your EKS. It, it is even offered as an EKS native add-on on the EKS dashboard. And after you perform the installation, the tree will provide you with the uh, policy rules that the tree has codified and scan whether your cluster is actually following the official AWS security best practices guide. So as you can see, the guide really translates to down to earth rules that help you understand, okay, what am I supposed to do? Okay, all containers should have limit capabilities. Uh, all users should have a role and so on and so on. So let's go in and install the tree and get our report and then see what we can do after we get the results. We can either start remediating and fixing issues, but we can also enable policy enforcement to block any future workloads that are trying to run on our EKS that do not meet this policy. And this is being done by using an admission controller webhook that is a native API in Kubernetes. Let's go. So let's go on and install the tree. So in order to do so and check out if we're meeting the EKS best practices. So first of all, I'm going to the, the, tree, that, uh, the tree project and I'm going to follow the installation instructions. Just going to add the Helm repository, really simple. Um, and I'm going to perform the installation. Okay, so I've performed the installation. And as you can see, it uh, finished installing the Helm chart on my cluster. And I actually installed it with the, the tree policy EKS. So this policy will follow the EKS security best practices. So now what I can do is I can navigate to the dashboard and you can see that we get an overview and we see my cluster. I called it Shim cluster and it's an EKS version cluster. And as you can see, we can see several rules that are failing here, several rules that are passing. So let's go over the rules and see what we can do. So for example, I'm not preventing containers from having unnecessary system call privileges. I'm not preventing containers from escalating privileges. So let's dive deeper into that. So if I go into that, I can see the different namespaces, the name of the resources and the kind that are actually in violation of this policy. In that case, they do not prevent containers from escalating privileges. So I can see what is the rule impact that containers are allowed to privilege escalate and attackers may use this to manipulate applications and gain more permissions. The rule fix is easy and how to fix the failure, I just need to add this parameter. So I can click here and I will get to the docs. And in the docs, you can see prevent from escalating. I can see why is this happening? The rule is failing because I'm not using the allow privilege escalation token parameter in my configuration. And in order to fix this, I can uh, run the allow privilege escalation false. 
So in this way, you can remediate the failures that you have. So let's look at, at how it will look like from the developers and engineers side when they apply rules. So currently I have a, a YAML file that is not compliant with the, those EKS security best practices. And if I perform, um, and if I perform a kubectl apply, oops, kubectl apply and actually um, submit those um, changes to my cluster, and you will see that there is a problem with the deployment and, and I can get the full report here. So now I will see the invocation and I can see that it has failed and there is an issue with my uh, uh, deployment. But maybe I want to enable policy enforcement and maybe I want to block those resources from actually happening, from actually running on my uh, uh, cluster. So in order to do so, I can go to the, the tree docs and here in the, the tree docs, I can go into the configuration and look at the behavior that allows me to enable a policy enforcement. So I'm going to copy this. I'm opa, here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to run this command and I'm going to upgrade my deployment with the parameter that says the tree enforced true. And we'll see in a moment how, when again, I will try to submit this workload, it should be prevented. So now if I'm going to run the kubectl apply command again, uh, the resources will be scanned. And as you can see, I did not install anything on my computer. It is just an admission controller webhook, which is a native API within Kubernetes. And with what we can see here is that there is an error from the server and the admission webhook, the tree, denied the request. So we actually prevented this workload from running on our cluster. Sorry, because it does not have a um, second profile. Uh, the read-only root file system is not set to true. We allow privilege escalations and we, we do not have CPU limits and we do not want this type of workload to run on our Kubernetes. So here you can see the, uh, in this way, you can go and, and um, apply the, the Kubernetes uh, EKS best practices and not only get the status of, of where you stand, but also remediate and block future deployments that do not meet your policy.